We all can use a refresher, if you will, okay? We all can use a refresher. And I remember when I was sitting in these seats and a whole lot younger than I am right now, it's a lot of things I heard in church that I did not fully understand, okay? So, but one thing I did understand in school, how many of you are like good at math? Okay, so you got a math. How many of you are pretty good at study? Okay, so let's see. Okay, this is a kind of a somewhat older math problem. If I say to you, I need the answer. What is solve for x? Okay, you ready? Three x plus five. Three x plus five equals eleven. Solve x. Should I?
the see in, in the Bible when we sin, the, the God's justice demanded death. Now, because we had Jesus, and Jesus has saved us, and Jesus has has died for us, and He was He was that that I can't use the words we use in, in Sunday school. He was He was the atonement. He was the reparation. He was the sacrifice for everything that we do wrong. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He was a sacrifice. So in us doing wrong and reconciling with God, the only thing that, that, that God asks us to do is believe in the one that he sent, who is Jesus. Okay? And the other thing is to love. If you love each other, all those 613 laws, y'all just are with the Ten Commandments, um, your desire to do those things aren't there. Mm. If you love. Oh. And love is weird because we're taught when we're young that love is just for our families. That's right. It's not just for our families. It's for our neighbors. It's for everyone in this church. Love is what makes me drive 95 miles every Sunday morning. Come on now. Amen. To come and teach y'all. Love was basically said to two o'clock in the morning put presents together. You have to look at your motivation for everything That's you it. do. That's it. And I mean motivation. Motivation is what is the thing that makes you do the thing? Yes, you do. Okay? What's the thing that makes you do? What's the thing that when somebody calls your name that you black it out and don't and don't do what you told? What's the thing? What is it? What is the thing that when you know you're supposed to do your homework, when you know you're supposed to study, when you know you're supposed to be a place on time, but you still, what's that? We have to look at our motivations. And our motivation has to be love. I know we don't love homework. We don't love school. We don't love paying bills, I promise you. We don't love paying for, for, for we, don't, we don't love having to spend money on stuff like that. But you got to really look at your motivation. Your motivation at this age has to be because you love Jesus. You love God, but you love yourself. I love myself too much not to disappoint myself. Mm. Not your teacher, not your mama, not Miss Jen, I love myself too much not to disappoint myself. That's good. That's good. Okay? Because who likes to get in trouble? Who likes to get busted? Who likes to get called out? We're going to talk about discipline in just a minute. I have so much, y'all. I try to put it on your, keep it on your level so that we're not doing too much. Okay. So, um, maybe there is a slide that says I'm not in this. Ungodliness. Here it is. I'm going to give you the definition. Denying or disobeying God. Period. It is a complete disregard for God. Okay? So when I choose to do something and I don't go to God first, I am doing what? If I'm not even sight God, what am I doing? If I never sight God before I jumped into anything, if I never saw God before I tried out the football, if I never saw God before I tried out the children, if I never saw God before I took this test, what am I doing? You're disobeying. These are real easy things to understand. That is the dictionary definition of ungodliness. That is right teaching. That is not something I made up to make you act right. Okay? This is something that is verifiable. You can go to the dictionary and just want to say that. So as Christians, and as we're growing in our in our spiritual maturity, and at least a word young, I'm like, oh Lord, oh, why is she talking to me about this? I have no need for these things. Trust me, what I'm doing is imagine that you're an empty cup and I'm pouring the best drink, the most refreshing thing into you in the world because one day you're going to need this. Because one day somebody will say you are rotten, you are mean, you are ungodly, you are unholy and you're going to go
righteousness of God. And I stand fully in that. I'm not lazy. I'm not trifling. I'm not stupid. I'm the righteousness of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Look, I see, I see some yawns. You know, if I'm not up here telling jokes, y'all gonna be seeing it. Alright? So, this is God for God. How many of you wanted something so bad? Something material. Maybe some shoes, a shirt, a hair, whatever it is y'all want going out there. You used to like money. You used to like old hard cash. So, how many of you just wanted something so bad? How many of you wanted something so bad you couldn't take it? Don't ask them. That's right. How many of you wanted something so bad you kind of walked by like this? Did this? Yeah. Did this? Yeah. And, and then you stuck in your pocket and you held it close so it wouldn't fall out. And you walked out of your store. Or you walked out of the classroom. Or you stood off somebody's desk. And you hid till you got home and you could treasure like my precious. I wanted it so bad. The pen light up. I wanted it so bad. It made noise. I wanted it so bad. I just had to take it. Denying or disobeying God. Don't, you're not trusting. So when our parents say, no, you can't have something, you guys have to understand that if you got everything you asked for, you wouldn't have a place to put it. If you got everything you asked for, you would cease to trust God. Yeah, yeah. If every time you said, Mama, I want this and bing, I got it, you wouldn't trust. And I'm saying that thing because as you get older, there's going to be things that you want for real. Like, like, like God, I want a really nice house. I want a great job. I want a nice car. And God says, these things can be yours. You're going to have to have the wisdom to know how to take care of them. The, the education to get the job to pay for them is going to take time. Do you trust that I know what your heart says it needs and I'm going to give it to you? Do you trust me enough to let me correct your dream and remake it so that it's in line with my will? When we pray, I know it's like, oh God, we ask God, we ask God. The way God blesses us is He blesses us in His will. Yeah. Okay? And it's like, what's God's will? What's God's will? God, when He created you, He knew what your life was going to be. He knew what He desired for you. He knew what He had for you. He knew how much you were going to have to get. He knew what you were going to have to go without. He knew that every time you needed to get punished or corrected or reprimanded so that you can be what He called you to be. And we have to pray for God's will. You guys. So, too much. I'm going to stop right here. What did you learn already? One thing. What you got? Don't be disobedient. Amen. What else did you learn? I learned um, you don't always have to get what you want. You can just go without. about what is 
right and stop sinning. For to your shame, I say that some of you don't know God at all. That's for the people who know the right thing to do and they what? They do the wrong thing anyway. And he said to that, I, I say to some of you don't know God at all. Did you keep on sinning? We're going to, look, there, there are sins that we all right and there sins that we, we're not 100% clear on at the time. And there's, there's some grace to that. But those all right ones, let me tell you something. As you guys grow up and Jesus gets on the inside of you for real, not just I go to church with my auntie worship, and I sing in the choir worship, and when Miss Jennifer asks me to do stuff, I do it. I'm talking about when, when, when Jesus gets on the inside of you for real. Things about your thought process start to change. Your desire for things start to change. Your desire to be great grows. Because God wants you to be great. He wants you guys to be dynamic. Everybody sitting here has the potential to be dynamic. Not just good, but dynamic. Dynamic enough that you're so good, you come back and you bless somebody else. And you bless somebody else's children. And you bless somebody else's parents. And you, and, and you bless your church. And you come back and say, I remember when she stood up here and she was talking about all the things and she told us what sin it was. Because we had been sitting in here and we weren't quite sure. And we weren't how, quite sure how sin applies to our daily lives. And I mean daily. The sin is the clock went off at six and I covered my head up and turned it off. <laughs> The sin is, mine will be in the car for seven, and I'm coming out the door like this. So she got to be late for work. That's the sin. You see how sin is so selfish? It's so thoughtless. It's so self-concerned. And let me tell you how good God is. God blesses you without yourself being involved. You don't have to do anything. You don't have anything to do. If you believe in the one that God sent, you have nothing to do. There, you don't have to do these things for God to bless you. I mean, again, your heart changes and you want to. Again, motivation. You want to do these things. But you don't have to. And God still blesses you. That does not mean you have a gold card to go out here and sin. I just told you what does it say. Amen. Stop sinning.
<laughs> so, you guys, um, not to just hold y'all on. Let's see. Let's go to Romans 12, 4 and 5. Enjoy. 